Hello and welcome to this uh, presentation in a student pers pers perspective on the blended learning experience in a project-based context. Uh, the paper was written by me, Johannes Helmers, and my friend uh, Robert Nedergaard Nielsen, who uh, couldn't be here for this video presentation. Um, in this presentation, I'll just briefly go through an introduction about the EPIC collaboration, uh, how we collaborated as a group, and what we tried to solve. Uh, I will go through the, our development of a technical project, how our product ended up, and some of the reflections we, me and Robert have had on doing this international pro project. For me, it was the first time, and Robert has done several international EPIC projects. So yes, um, working with EPIC, uh, we started with a kickoff kick kick seminar. Uh, the reason this kickoff seminar was there was to establish awareness on cultural differences. As we read, we. We learned about the cultural dimensions, we learned about how you might be surprised of, of what is going on uh, other places in the world and, and how that is a natural thing that uh, people think different when they come from different cultures. Um, we also clarified expectations for our work and our communication and then the, the seminar was able to, to get us started, get us off the ground and figure out what we wanted to do. And our project setup was about uh, waste collection in Brasilia, and it was made up of uh, students from Denmark, from Brazil, and from Turkey. And uh, one of the things we had to consider was the fact that the Danish students had 20 ECTS per person, and Brazilian student had two, and the single Turkish student had eight. And so of course, this was good for managing expectations to know but also to understand for you that uh, we did different things. And uh, of course, even though the Danish were the ones developing a large part of the technical solution, the Brazilian were instrumental to communicating with, uh, with the stakeholders uh, in Brazil. Otherwise, that wouldn't have been possible. Um, so it was uh, very, very good that we had we had this ability and we would also like to thank uh, Rasmus Plus who is funding EPIC for giving the opportunity for us to go to Hamburg and meet these people and, and spend some days with them. Um, it was uh, it was very important that, that this happened. Um, our initial concept springs from a problem in Brazil with uh, waste collection. Um, the in Brasilia, uh, the capital of Brazil, there has been one of the largest dump sites in the world um, and it was closed some years ago now, but uh, the work of cleaning up and figuring out efficient ways to uh, manage waste are still in progress. Uh, one of the companies working with this uh, were the stakeholder of our project. They have these uh, glass containers with uh, a small input hole and then they lift them up from the top and they empty out the bottom. So and we wanted to figure out a way if we could could build a network that were able to capture information about these containers. Uh, firstly, because it's interesting for this company to, to have such a solution. It would be for most trash collecting companies, but also in regards to the the national collection, is it actually possible in this kind of environment to set up a network um, and to, to do this kind of uh, measuring and, and what kind of data can you get. Uh, so, so we started uh, collaborating with a smaller partner, but, but initially we hoped that we also could scale this to more uh, ordinary collaborators instead of just glass collection. Um, with uh, this problem stated and what in mind, we decided on a concept where we built a sensor, a network system, uh, that relays to a server. So uh, a uh, dashboard presentation and a route optimization can be done on this data. Um, and what we decided, and also it might look a bit weird, but what we decided was that the Danish students would be able to build this part and uh, the dashboard could be done by the Brazilian students because language and communication are very, very important here and that the company we work with were not uh, mainly English speaking. Um, and then we decided that our, 
that the, the student from Turkey could do a road, opt- road optimization um, because that was part of his curricula. So knowing this, we were able to get started. Um, but uh, before we, we actually left Hamburg, knowing what we wanted to do, we had to figure out how we wanted to do it. Um, so first we set out for figuring out how to communicate and we decided on Slack and Google Hangouts, but for any purposes and kinds, it, it, it doesn't really matter just as long as everybody gets to agree and talk about and argue what, what is best and what works um, for the people. And we, and we decided on Slack and Google Hangouts after, after some discussion. Um, this uh, seminar also uh, helped us with making uh, what we call regular assessments. Uh, which was set up in a platform, so we had to fill in, like, how would we like to evaluate each other after our our decided meetings and and on what terms. So as you see in our paper, we've written uh, our definitions of the good meeting structure and meeting feedback, correct use of agreed online tools and cultural awareness. These were all things that were very important, um, but one of the things that the, our group, at least, uh, kind of struggled with, with uh, was being able to to keep at it, but I will get to that later. So now I'll go a bit more into detail about the development of the technical project um, and, and mainly about the parts that we as Danish students did. So uh, we built a low arming. Um, some of you might not know what that is, but it's a form of IoT uh, wireless connection. Uh, that is very long range and very low power um, and that is kind of phenomenal because then you can send small amounts of data uh, a long way without needing to have power where you send it from uh, making it an ideal solution for something like trash collection. Um, we also uh, as technical developers made a, made a for us kind of big choice of not making things from scratch. Usually as a student, we go for the highest learning experience and sometimes that is making everything ourselves, but we decided that we rather would be done with more and, and learn more about the whole picture of, of, the, of the network stack instead of knowing about a small thing that we then build completely ourselves. Then we also spend a lot of time on planning and testing. Uh, when you build a wireless network, you have to figure out where you put antennas and where you put network nodes. And the network nodes were already decided for us because we needed to place nodes where we needed to place sensors, so on all the trash cans. So we need to figure out how to place uh, network gateways to be able to how, to, how to build our network system to be able to manage this. But of course, we weren't able to go and test it in the field. Uh, so we needed we used uh, simulation tools to figure out as best we could how to how to place these uh, gateways and hopefully before the year ends we will actually be able to test our simulated and planned uh, network so that would be nice the final product that we ended up with were uh, three parts this is the first part this is the physical product that was built by the network engineers and uh, not shown here is uh, what is going on on a on a server and uh, and uh, three Docker containers and stuff like that uh, up in the intranets. But uh, this is a gateway. The large one on the on the left is a gateway, and the small one on the right is the sensor node. As you can see, there are cables coming from the gateway. Those are Ethernet and power. And the sensor node has no cables. It's purely run on battery and a and an IoT sensor node, and it can run for approximately two years. And then there is a uh, a part that is the dashboard. So the information from the sensors get uh, are presented in a in a dashboard like this. So there is an easy overview for the for the company, and they have the the locations and how filled containers are and uh, guest weights and, uh, and the percent they are filled and the temperature of the sensor. And then they have uh, this, which is going to be for the drivers, which is an optimized route based on the, the fill, fill levels of the containers. So you can, you can decide uh, to leave containers out. You can decide to put them in based on if they are like this container, there are uh, approximately nothing in it, then 
you probably won't pick that up now, but you probably want to do uh, the film one first. So that was kind of the idea that if we had these informations, we could probably optimize and save uh, fuel and save time for, for these companies. And that would of course be very nice. So based on what I've presented now, you have some idea of uh, what we actually did. Uh, but now I want to talk to, to you about some of the challenges that we had and some of the, the things that me and Robert have considered uh, after and in writing this uh, paper about it and why I think it's important that you as uh, former uh, future teachers hopefully know more about um, and in your teaching what you can do to help students. Um, so first of all, one of the things you couldn't uh, do anything about was Corona, but just to say that, that we of course had challenges, we couldn't get to, uh, to our labs and uh, we didn't have the same access to our stakeholders that we usually that we than we usually with and we know that our our guys in brazil were struggling with uh with getting getting in touch with uh, with each other uh, as well as um, as with us uh, but uh, one of the things that aren't um, that uh, much based on corona is the uh, the challenge of communication from technical to non-technical uh, we as uh, technical students were, at least in the beginning, very, very challenged by needing to explain in, in layman's terms what we were trying, what we could do and what we could not do and what we were trying to do and what we weren't trying to do. Um, so as network engineers, we don't have any specific interest in making very good sensors for measuring distance. Um, and we tried to explain that to to the Brazils when we were on a seminar and actually talking about the cultural differences in communication. So at a moment where we should have been the most aware of the challenge of what we were trying to do, uh, we weren't really aware of the things we were trying to do. So it is just to understate the importance of explaining when you when you want to get technical and non-technical students to collaborate in a, in a positive way and not in a hair pulling, uh, very frustrating way, you have to be very clear about them. To, to explain to them the importance of of doing this in an in a non technical fashion and explaining exactly what you mean uh, and also being very patient because you've spent some years understanding your technical lingo and they didn't they understood something else so it's very important that you that you that you take it uh, at a level where everyone is comfortable and also when the non technical talks uh, economy it's very important that they explain this to us in a, in a way that, that we are able to understand it. Uh, so being very careful about language and about how you how you say stuff and not using technical terms is, is one of uh, what was one of the challenges for our project and one that led to a lot of uh, discussion and a lot of uh, frustration, at least from the Danish guy in, in getting the, the, the people talking to the stakeholders to understand what we could actually deliver on and what we couldn't. Um, but in the end, we were able to, to deliver much more uh, than we actually thought we could. Um, so another one of the challenges that we that we faced was remote working. Uh, this is also based on somewhat on Corona, but but uh, this would also be a thing that you that that we probably will face a lot in the f in the in the future. Getting to uh, to collaborate. And not being together is, is sometimes very, very hard because, yeah, communication breaks down and, and you don't necessarily get an answer when you are, uh, when you're needing it and you don't necessarily have an answer. And, and when you don't have an answer, you're, you are, you're, it's much more easy to just be silent than say, we don't have an answer yet. Um, so to establish a, a even more open and honest and, and feedback communication is good and usually Epic would allow us to meet once more in the mid of our projects, but that wasn't uh, an available thing for us, unfortunately. But I think that also would have helped a lot. Um, some of the takeaways that we've made is that this initial meeting helped a lot with communication, and of course, another physical meeting would would have done so much for uh, for for the feeling of this project. Um, another takeaway is that these kinds of group works does wonders for technical understanding uh, mainly because of 
the thought you need to put into explaining this. Uh, I I always used to think that if you need to explain something to someone that doesn't understand it, you need to understand it even more. Um, and and that is that has been proven so right in this project. I have. Uh, I've never done a project uh, where my understanding has deepened so much, and where my 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 feeling of of making a difference also because I understand things better has been so big. So so this is a very very nice thing to walk away with, and I would I would uh, I would enjoy to see universities doing much more like this, and and hopefully collaborate. Um, more and then uh, on the side of motivation, doing projects that are problem based are of course a good thing for motivation, uh, but also solving real world problems for us makes it makes it more motivating. But also having stakeholders, st- having stakeholders that are dependent on you and not just like saying yeah it's fine if you learn something. No, it's it's fine if you make a product that works so we can use it to something in the real world. That's a that's a different experience, and that is also uh, it can be hard and frustrating, but it's also very motivating when you get to the end. Um, so yeah, that was it for me. I hope you enjoy my little video presentation, and hopefully you will have uh, something for questioning.